No one would have ever guessed that Chris Paul would be a Golden State Warrior. His continuous playoff battles with Steph Curry and the rivalry that Paul and the Warriors seemed to develop made a Chris Paul team up seem completely out of the question. But now the Warriors have two of the top five point guards of all time playing together, and it will be a marvel to watch. However, CP3 has been such a legendary point guard for so long, and we all knew he'd be this good coming into the NBA out of Wake Forest in 2005. Still, some teams passed on Paul at the top of the 2005 draft. Let's take a look at what happened to the players drafted before Chris Paul, as all of these players ended up having really solid and prolonged NBA careers. At number one, we have Andrew Bogut. He spent around his first seven season with the Bucks. He was a terrific defensive center, but was never really a star level player. But he averaged around 12 to 14 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks with his best season in 2010, where he averaged 15.9 points, 10.2 rebounds, and two and a half blocks. He was traded during the 2012 season for Monte Ellis after only playing 12 games for the Bucks during that 2012 season. But then he ended up becoming a huge part of the Warriors 2015 championship run with his shot blocking and passing. Unfortunately though, the next season in the finals, he suffered an unfortunate leg injury and he was traded to the Mavericks in the 2016 offseason for a 2019 second round pick. He was eventually though traded midway through the 2017 season to the Sixers and was then waived. Unfortunately, the injury bug caught Bogut again as when he signed with Cleveland in March of 2017, he only played a few minutes for them before fracturing his leg and he didn't play again that season. Then after he played 24 games with the Lakers in the 2018 season, and then he ended up going back to the Warriors for his last NBA season in March 2019, and he played 11 games with them that season, and he played throughout their finals run. He then returned to Australia after a 14-year NBA career, and he was definitely one of the better defensive centers of his time. His stats didn't pop out at you, his game wasn't particularly flashy, but without his presence in the paint and his passing ability for the Warriors, I don't think they win that 2015 championship or even make it to the finals in 2016. I think he was that important for their team, and I love watching Bogut back then. But yeah, he had a great NBA career, and despite not having the career that you think of, you know, when you picture number one overall picks, Bogut was really, really solid, extremely good in his role, and he was pivotal to the Warriors 2015 championship run. At number two, we have Marvin Williams, and he spent his first seven years with Atlanta. At first, he wasn't really the best three-point shooter, but slowly but surely in Atlanta, he developed into a really decent 3 and D power forward, and he had his career best scoring season in 2008 at 14 points per game, but he actually only shot 10% from three that year. But he later improved to be a 39% three-point shooter by his last season in Atlanta in 2012. Then he was traded to the Jazz for Devin Harris and spent two seasons there. And then he ended up signing with Charlotte for the 2015 season and he spent his next five seasons there. He shot a career best 41% from three in the 2018 season, but then he was eventually waived by the Hornets in February 2020 and he signed with the Bucks shortly after. He never returned to the NBA after the 2020 season and he eventually retired. Williams also didn't really have the all-star career that you think of with number two overall picks, but he was so important for a lot of those Charlotte teams and kind of the late 2010s. Really good three-point shooter, really good defender, really good in the locker room, and he had a really, really good NBA career overall. It's unfortunate he never got a championship. I think he would have been a perfect piece for just any championship team over the past decade. But yeah, like I said, had a really good NBA career, and he completely changed his game. He didn't even shoot threes early on in his career, and to develop into a 40% three-point shooter, that is really, really cool. Definitely is an awesome work ethic for sure. His career ended off on a good note, was on a contending team, but unfortunately he never won a championship throughout his career after that 2020 season with the Bucks. At number three, we have Darren Williams. He spent his first six and a half seasons with Utah, and he consistently averaged a double-double in points and assists. And at the time, he was debatably the best point guard in the NBA along with Chris Paul. Consistently averaged over 15 points and 10 assists in Utah. But then he was traded to the Nets before the 2011 trade deadline in a package centered around Devin Harris and Derek Favors. He spent a little over four years with the Nets and then was actually waived in the 2015 offseason. Unfortunately, during his time with the Nets, his production and efficiency declined and he struggled with some injury issues. After that, though, he did sign a multi-year deal with the Dallas Mavericks in the 2015 offseason and was there for a few years. But then he was waived by the Mavericks in February 2017 and signed with the Cavs a few days later. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get a championship either before his career retired as 2017 was his best chance. But he hasn't played in the NBA since 2017 and he did eventually retire. Darren Williams was a very, very good point guard. Definitely in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Like I said, was the baby the best point guard in the NBA along with his fellow draft 
teammate Chris Paul. It's unfortunate that he never ended up getting an NBA championship throughout his career, but he still had a really solid NBA career overall. So that is what happened to the players drafted before Chris Paul in the 2005 NBA draft. I know there was only three players drafted before him in that draft, but I still want to go over these players because I feel like these guys don't get talked about enough. And honestly, I think a lot of these guys had underrated careers. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any suggestions next for this series. I'm always open to suggestions with that. But yeah, Chris Paul and the Warriors, it's going to be quite a sight to see. I'm really looking forward to seeing how him and Steph Curry pair on the court. And as I said, it will be an absolute marvel to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.